This is the Cloak River Estuary, located on the west coast of Prince of Wales Island in southeastern Alaska. In this area, Tlingit people devised two technologies for capturing four species of salmon. These salmon, which have been returning to this river for thousands of years, provided the Tlingit with their primary food throughout the winter season. These fishing methods are referred to as tidal pulse fishing because the ebb and flow action of the tide is critical to the capture of salmon. Salmon were returning to the river to spawn. At high tide, the traps were completely covered, allowing the salmon to enter the river unimpeded. When the tide receded, some of the salmon were caught as the traps were exposed, while other fish backed out with the tide. Using these methods, Tlingit fishermen trap salmon in two different ways. In the estuary channel, they placed V-traps positioned so that the strong, outgoing tidal current held the salmon against the trap's walls. Nearby, they placed semicircular traps on the lagoon flats, specially designed to use the slower-moving water of the ebbing tide to trap salmon. Salmon entered the trap shortly after high tide as it started to go out, but could not leave once the tide retreated below the wooden walls, trapping them inside. Immediately behind us is in the estuary zone. The system that was developed is called V-traps. The Hlinket created V-traps by pounding alignments of carved wooden stakes into the stream substrate that were supported by rocks. Trap makers positioned the V-traps so that one of the arms followed the estuary channel and the other pointed toward the shore at a 45 degree angle. The wooden stakes in both arms would be two to three feet high. The stakes would be densely packed at the apex to avoid any salmon escaping the trap. The Hlingit designed this technology so the salmon backing out on the ebb tide would be channeled into the traps. Gradually the salmon would be pushed toward the apex so at mid to low water as the tide receded people would be able to capture the fish. Throughout this estuary, from the falls to the lower portion of the tidal zone, the Hlingit built a number of V-traps over a considerable period of time. One of the traps was built 875 years ago. Most of the V-pointed green islands seen here are the result of the Hlingit, who created this engineered landscape. The traps were outlawed by the U.S. government in 1889, and the Hlingit had to stop using them. Since that time, the abandoned traps have collected sediment coming down the river, creating the grassy islands where the V-traps were located. Lingit fishermen used a second traditional technology, semicircular fish traps that allowed them to capture salmon on the ebb tide on tidal flats. The Hlingit would drive stakes in a semicircular arc in areas covered by the high tide. As the tide receded, salmon were caught behind the stakes or weir fences and harvested. Hlingit trap makers built these traps at different times and in different areas within the intertidal zone. The intertidal traps were an ingenious way to capture but never waste salmon that were not needed. At low tide, the fish could survive in the water remaining in the trap. At this point, they were collected for processing. Within a few hours, the high tide returned and fish that weren't captured could escape back into the estuary. This set of traps included a more sophisticated feature than other traps that have been located in this area. The Hlingit created a canal to connect the large semicircular trap with a pond which would hold salmon during the low tide. This innovation allowed the people to collect salmon while they were alive and fresh. Different households built traps for their own use. Over time, the Hlingit residents of this area created a very dramatic and sophisticated human-engineered landscape in the Cloak Estuary. <laughs>